All right, everybody. Hello, hello. This is Dr. Rich Shevner. Hope you're doing well out there in YouTube land and beyond. It's the beginning of spring. It's very exciting. And we are quickly moving into warmer weather, things like that. And the sad news is we're kind of getting near the end of the stream. This whole series, we're winding down. We've got two left in addition to this one that you're tuning into today. So Dr. Rich Shevner with you. Good to be back. As always, today's topic is writing in Markdown for the web. Now, you probably noticed at the bottom of this actual uh, feed that it says pre-recorded video, and that's what we're working with this week. That's because I'm actually in San Francisco as this thing is debuting on the YouTube. I'm out there for the Game Developers Conference in San Francisco. Um, and yeah, doing a little bit of research out there. And I wanted to make sure that I got this video in and part of the stream in for you all before then, because I think this is a really good one um, and a different way of kind of thinking about the web. So writing in Markdown for the web, we're going to talk about that language itself and sort of what that entails. Um, but first, I've got a couple announcements, as is tradition now here on the stream. Uh, I want to give a huge shout out once again to Writing Center Director John Suffren and the writing department for supporting another term of Get Red Live. If you'd like to see any of our past live streams, you can find them in two places on the YouTube pages where we have everything listed here. Um, if you just go to uh, search up why you write live and then you should see all the results of the streams and latest videos we've been posting and also the, the past uh, seasons and episodes. So we have stuff from last term and then even before that, a number of students from RIT 4001 had posted videos and we're hoping to kick that up again very soon. And um, also on the page here with links to past ones, as, as I said, but um, we also have links to one-on-one -on -one appointments, our Multimedia Language Center, ESL Open Learning Center. We have notes on our accessibility specialist as well as drop-in sessions. We also offer one-on-one -on -one appointments um, in person and over the web, as well as online paper submissions if you're interested in exploring that. So um, Get Red is just one of many things we're doing now in terms of workshops. There's also uh, Dr. Junior Baus's Grammar On series that continues, and we also have workshops, um, whether it's on organization, research methods, what have you. So lots of stuff to sign up for it. I hope you're enjoying it. Um, again, I'm grateful to be doing this. And recently, we discussed as a department, we'll be continuing the stream into next year. So we'll take the summer off, kind of prepare for the season, but season three will actually be out there, hosted by yours truly and students next year year so very very excited about that stay tuned for more okay so let's talk about this week's topic writing for writing in markdown for the web so what i wanted to pull up actually is sort of one of these things we can see from kairos that i meant to pull up a little bit sooner okay um, so this is by Aaron Beveridge and uh, does is as a writer in um, University of North Carolina Greensboro, and um, part of this was inspired by his argument in here a couple of years ago about um, how sort of writing studies has influenced potentially the ways in which we write for um, the web, and so this was a overview basically of what Mark 10 is. And I'll put this in uh, the comments. So you're, you're welcome to look at it as well. Um, but you know, if you've been writing for the web for the last couple of years, maybe you've done it for a project in a class or something like that, you have likely done very little coding. And most of it has been on a thing called a WYSIWYG. So as a sort of beverage methods here, we're used to doing things in what's called what you see is what you get or a WYSIWYG system. So if you're doing it in WordPress or on Blogger or Tumblr and so forth, you're likely just writing right onto the page that's going to be published. So my blog that I keep for my class, RIT um, 2001, that I'm doing right now, all of this was composed in WordPress. So if I literally go to the edit sign here, 
for the most part, I can change everything on this page without having to do any code. When you're on YouTube, you know, how many times have you seen the ads for websites, services such as Wix, Weebly, what have you, Webflow, WordPress, what have you, Google Sites, all places where you can just, if anything, this is a demo, right? And once I hit update, it's going to be right there on the page. And that's been really great for web writing and beverage gets into this as well, that um, without these kind of, you know, uh, systems that we see, um, WYSIWYGs and so forth, we wouldn't see as much web writing. And so um, Markdown was a way of simplifying markup language or HTML, which is um, hypertext markup language for writers. Um, and it doesn't require as much sort of code. Um, but it's limited to just simple sort of marks, hash marks and so forth. And there are conventions to it. So it was developed a number of years ago. And this is also just another thing that uh, Beverage had developed, but John Gruber um, had, had developed it a while ago. And essentially the way you can think about it too is it's a way to convert text to HTML without having to do a lot of coding using a lot of that language that's embedded into it. So it's very interesting and I encourage you to look at this because it gives you a really nice overview of what it is, but we're going to get into the more practical side of how to do it and, um, you know, in a, in a really, really simple way. This is also very good if, you know, if you've been working with HTML code, but you want to just get the writing done in another space. Um, and then before you have to move it, you know, into a web editor or something like that, you can do it in Markdown and then convert it with the various tools. Now, Markdown was developed open source. There are other paid sort of programs out there, but I'm going to be linking in the video description some sources you can use, um, including the ones that I'm sort of demoing here. Before that, let me do a little bit more framing and then we can kind of get into how to practice. So this is the template that I typically have with my students or one of the lessons that we were really talking about in our classes. And I thought it'd be interesting to share with you all, you know, when you're thinking about a web project, um, you know, let's say you've got to design something for a class, or you've got to build a page. A lot of times the students in my classes will do this, but certainly, you know, you might be working on your own kind of um, web text or web ready element. We've seen that in a variety of departments um, through the writing center. And then in conversations that I have with colleagues across different faculties, we are doing this kind of stuff. So typically like the workflow that I will pitch to them is you have a proposal and then you decide, you know, what do I want to do from here? What kind of template do I want to work with? Um, if at all, or do I want to build a website from the ground up? And one thing that I always point to them to is it's called HTML five up is a, um, template provider for websites. But the difference is when you download this, First of all, you have to download it anyways. It's not just right on the web. Notice that you have the, the full files here in a folder. So to open this, you actually have to use something like brackets or Dreamweaver in order to do any of the editing. Now, if this is your first time seeing any backend code, it might be pretty overwhelming, right? Um, but that's one of the first decisions we make is, okay, if we're gonna, if we're gonna be using a template and kind of building from it, we probably need something like HTML5 up to get started. I don't know if we can actually build one from the ground up. That would take an entire term to do. So these templates kind of help us a little bit, right? And then what we have to do from there is a little bit of file preparation. So you saw that I downloaded these this template, it's in a folder, it's right here. What I have to do is mainly work from this with a third party 
provider, right? So brackets or something like that, the tool that I was sort of hinting at um, is a way that I could start doing that coding. And everything's gonna be done from that file, right, that I've created. So images, everything I'm gonna put in there. Um, similarly, you know, I'm gonna link this into in the, the video as well. If you want to practice with templates and so forth, uh, W3 Schools is really well known for teaching, you know, some basics of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, what have you. We're mainly worried about HTML, uh, hypertext markup language to do this kind of coding. And they offer just a couple, you know, a handful of templates you could work with if you're trying to get some practice with code. But here's the thing, when you open it up, you get the, you know, um, in-app or, uh, in browser web editor here on the left and then you get the sort of display on the right and you might want to ask yourself now like where do i actually change things and sometimes it's pretty obvious i mean notice like here it says home but a href so forth the class that you have to pick and so forth and then the, the text itself you can change that sort of stuff um and you have to click run and it actually changes. So one thing that markup attempted to do and has done well, I would say um, very much so, is simplified doing things like this, particularly writing long text. So notice here, before we even write a paragraph, even the one on like, this is a fictional band website, you have to do brackets P class and then name sort of what style you want it to be and then a closed brackets p to actually publish it and again that was kind of a, a little bit of a, an issue it's been an issue for some folks um, just because having to manually put those in or have shorthands um, could be pretty laborious if you ask me it's really fun to learn that comes naturally once you start like practicing in language a bit more but um for those of us who just kind of want to get to the writing, markup can be really, really powerful. So we have this. What we're going to try to do is replicate basically this page for a bit and then try to convert it into from Markdown to HTML. Okay, so what does that look like? Maybe asking that now. All right. So, the, and this is another sort of template I have too. Like, if you're just doing a simple web page, this is the most bare bones skeleton you could look at. Like a lot of times when you're writing for the web and you're just focused on the writing and not so much like images and things like that, you're not gonna really deal with a lot of this stuff. Maybe like a, a designer you're working with can help you with that. If you're just trying to tell a story for the web, you're most likely gonna use things like headers and paragraphs. So these kind of, um, um, bits of code to create a header. When you go to, for example, like H2 and you run, notice that it gets smaller and there's a pattern to this. If you want to know more about how that kind of works, what the sort of shorthands are for code, the HW3 schools, um, you know, it's a, it's a pretty old school website, but it's very reliable in terms of giving you the basics of HTML elements, headings, paragraphs, what kind of code bits you need and attributes you need to make it work. But again, we're not really talking about that because we're trying to get this off of out of HTML so that we can put it into uh, Markdown and then later convert it without having to do much. Okay, so here's what this would look like. Let's start back. I'm just clicking around a little bit. Okay, so one thing that I'll encourage you to do if you're following along is um, there is a website that I found really useful in my classes and I've even used in my own work lately. It is called Stack Edit. And it was developed by um, Benoit Shevlern. Thanks so much for making this open access to folks. Um, really cool things. It's designed for web writers, as you sort of see here. 
What I like about this source is it gives you a template to basically work with. Um, and so this is like the welcome file. Now, unlike HTML, which has numerous you know, elements and styles, what I, as, as I sort of said, and I'll just keep saying this sort of over and over, it gives you a lot of simplified sort of marks and, and, and bits of um, punctuation that style it in a way that you would see on the web. So let's just start from this welcome file. Um, notice here a couple things. This is the kind of um, welcome file that tries to style things differently for you so that you understand what the difference is between the kind of stuff you see here and what you see with HTML. So um, on this stack edit page two on the right, you'll see this kind of cheat sheet that's um, it's a bit down in the middle of the menu. One hashtag means header one. So this would be, you know, if you're trying to format it, when you go on WordPress, for example, just doing that and bolding it, you know, it's going to usually give you a good looking header. But in Markdown, you're doing a hashtag, for example, and a space, don't forget that, will make it a level one header. And then it applies to header two is two hashtags and then a space. Um, when you want to bold something, you're going to take two asteries. Make sure that you're closing them and it's going to look like that. What's great about two is in stack editor, you can also preview what you're working on. So this is what I'm doing in Markdown, and this is how it should look when it's published to the web. And then they give you various um, resources for, you know, if you if you want to make something bold, it's going to be strong against two asteries on each side, but then you might take out one if you want to do an emphasis, and you get a live preview of what that looks like on the right. And then a ver various other things you could do. So if you're adding one, two, three, you know, for example, you can make a list. Um, I will try that now. Say do stream, upload, be happy. And so yeah, look how much simpler that is. You know, when you're doing a link to in HTML, you have to do this. Uh, it's basically like an href element where you're linking to another page. So if I click on band, if I change this to the writ live stream, see what that does. We'll run it. That didn't work. Let me see. Um, I think what we could do is change this. Oh. Yeah, I have to find a little bit of a better example for that. But um, take my word for it when you're actually linking to things, you have to use typically this element called href um, where you pop in a link as you go and can be a little irritating to, to remember that code. So to show you what I mean by that, like if we go to links, they have a good link here for you. I could swap this out. Notice it's sort of a bit long. And that's going to take me to the page. Now this kind of paragraph, it's simplified in Markdown like this. So you can say a website you should check out. And what we would do is we would put that here. A lot simpler, potentially. I mean, again, if you're remembering <clears throat> the bits of punctuation to go with it, it's, it's pretty helpful. And so, yeah, most of this is textual. I can add pictures to um, images and, and such. So if I use this code and 
I wanted to do, hmm, we could do a picture. Let's go to York's page. Let's just grab the first one we see. Just for now, you know, not that we're going to keep it or anything. It's going to add it just like that. Now that takes an entirely different process in HTML. You can see the images and so forth are posted here. There's a slideshow. I could change this one, for example, to this York page and we might get something different. Let's see if it actually works. We'll wait just a second. Ah, yeah, it did work. Okay. So again, this element is called image. So it's basically brackets, IMG, SRC equals, and then you put the in quotation marks, you put the web code. This one is a little simpler. You can change the size of it. For example, they give you references here. Also in stack edit, another reason why I like this is because you can add stuff directly from the web. So if I added that, it would get, I would get the same results. All right. So that's a couple things we have. Um, so why don't we try this? We will try to replicate this template basically and the textual elements again that we're focused on we'll try to get that ready for in markdown and then we'll put it in here just to see what the what the difference is okay so we're working from the thing that says the band and here's what we're going to do i'm going to make a new file just to play around with band markdown practice we'll say and it's kind of yeah giving us that little reminder which is good we'll, we'll keep that and i may have to open up a couple different tabs we'll see all right so let's just say somebody gave us this text if we put it all in and we'll see what happens all right so it's kind of already formatted it for us just a little bit but we're going to just assume everything's out Someone's written this for us. I mean, even if we do it this way, let's like as part of the flow, just say that somebody somebody gave it to you like this, right? And they're like, I want you to get this ready for the web for me. Well, you know, you you could you could do something like save as an HTML file. You could do that. And we could say, we're going to just do right into the YU Dropbox, the band, it says. And so that's going to make a couple things. It's going to make another HTML file. And it's going to look just like that. You still have to edit it <laughs> with a code editor, so brackets or something. And let's see what it looks like in the back end when we do that. So lots of code there, right? I don't know if we want that. That's There's a ton here. So again, I'm kind of just going back and forth between the two because I would just want to show you kind of what friction you might have when you're asked to do something like this. And maybe you need to do it like on a custom um, HTML page or you have to work with a web editor, something like that. Okay, so... This is what we have. We've posted this in, you know, someone gave us the copy, so to say, and say, I want it to look just like this. So first thing we would do is we'd follow that good old hash um, hashtag here, and we would make the large sort of bolded header one. And then as I say here, we love music. What we're gonna do then is do two asteries um on the left and right so like like html usually you're, you're gonna have like a open open and closing mark um so to say a bit of punctuation that will help you you know make sure that that's it's working now in markdown you don't have to add any paragraph um elements or anything like that so no nothing like p what have you um has to be added 
you can just write. That's another great thing about it. Um, but, you know, maybe you want like another band image or something like that or one that's after. So we can leave this all alone. It looks pretty good. We will go to Pexels. And what I want to do is to type in band. And I think I can do this. I can just add this. As a, I'm going to save this for now on into my browser. Um, so let's say I want to add a picture next. So I will do this. And what I will do is add that image HTML. Or the, I will copy the image address, excuse me. I will put this into there. And I will say our band at I am during a late evening in Toronto. We'll say that. Did I forget that part? I think I did. Yep. Okay. So that is the alt text that you would see. Um, usually like this alt means, some, you know, the alternative text in case um, someone was using a screen reader. So always add that for accessibility purposes. And notice here on the right, it's already added. So let's say we want to add like another quote or something like that, um, you know, from a reviewer. All we'd have to do, or this is a block quote, kind of think of it that way. We would do the, I think it's a minus sign. I could never remember the two. And well, yeah, what we could do there is italicize it again. So we're using those to do that. Um, just hitting enter twice should let you get back to the paragraph. So, and you have these shorthands up here, but I think honestly kind of writing it on by hand can be also be very valuable. So, you know, get into the habit if you're working with Markdown um, of doing this by hand, just so it's a little, a little easier. Okay, so what we do next is we could add another paragraph. We are a band of four e plans ahead in the coming years. Check out our SoundCloud page as well as videos uploaded to YouTube. We're adding a little bit more than what we see on this one, but I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's converted. Okay. Now, what we're going to do here is link to some of the things we were referencing. So we'll, we will just do square brackets around the word, and then we add the link. So we're just going to link to the good old SoundCloud homepage. And we'll do it just like this. And I like this because it's just, it's easy to remember to put it in. It's almost like doing in-text citation. And so if you're familiar with doing that, which you all should be at this point, it could be very useful. All right, so the keyword that we're linking to is put in squares. And the, the URL is put into, um, parentheses. Okay, so that's uh, a couple things we've linked to. Let's see if other things um, we could just do down the line. We can expect say one more live shows. More cover songs. Bands we love. Shenanigans. Is that how you spell it? Um, I 
Okay, so all of those things, I'm just adding other things I can sort of think of. That works. Those are going to be the main things you're going to do as a writer. Um, again, like some of the stuff that we see at the top of this are going to be hard to change unless you know a little bit of like HTML and style sheets and things like that. Um, but again, if we're just thinking about your role as a writer, say you're collaborating with somebody on a project, using Markdown could be really useful. So here's what it looks like. Uh, we will take this. We, we like the copy for the most part. So we'll just go ahead and mute that for now. And what we'll do is go back to the menu. And what you can do at this point is export the markdown to um, HTML. So what I'm going to do now is just make this plain HTML. I don't really want to do much styling or anything like that. But I don't want to do it for me. I just want to be able to take this and post it right into a different form. So this will do this for me. We'll say March markdown HTML practice. So one thing to be aware of, you can open this up straight from it. It's going to look just like that. But you're like, hey, wait a minute. I thought you were going to help me put it into another page. Well, the way you'll do that is um, if you go to this piece, what you need, again, is something like Brackets or Dreamweaver. Brackets is totally free, by the way. Dreamweaver costs a little bit, but let's say you have those resources to use it, you are free to. Notice when I open this up in brackets, you get to see the code. If you just open up the page, like in Word or something else um, that you've downloaded, you're not going to be able to do that. But this still gives us a step ahead because we didn't have to remember all of these things. Brackets P, H1, the ID, all that sort of stuff. We just had to remember um, a couple quick punctuation marks to get this up and running. So if you've opened it up, um, in one of those platforms, again, brackets, there's also Atom. There are numerous other ones that allow you to edit HTML code right there um, inside the text editor. Do check that out and I'll link that in the description too. So I can check it out just to see what it looks like. Again, it looks pretty similar. So what I'm gonna do is copy all of this and move it to something like this. Um, in fact, I could do this a little differently in a minute because we have some time on the stream, but essentially this part is what I've changed. I've added a bunch of different stuff. Um, I don't really care about the, the sorts of things. So add is this, I've just basically swapped out this section. In W3 schools, I'm gonna hit run. And it's gonna look just like this. So the image is pretty big. We probably gotta change that a little bit um, because it's using, you know, the natural size of it. Um, so if I drag it over, you'll see like how how massive it is on the on the page. So let's just tinker with that a little bit. I may just make this literally 75 by 126 and we'll see. Now it's a pretty, yeah, I mean, it's a pretty small image now. Um, trying to think where I could double this. We'll say 150. Oh, my math. Let's see, uh, 24, 252. I think that's right. Okay, so that's a little bit better. So if we enlarge this, it looks like that. So all the code. Okay, we started in Markdown, we converted it, and we moved it over to here. Now I'm realizing as I was doing this, one thing that I may be suggesting is like you could only do editing and something like this. Um, you do need, you know, a, a uh, text editor like Brackets to work. So what I'm going to do is save this code. Let me just back up a little bit.
and templates. W3 schools templates. That's where we found it. Try it yourself. Save the code. Oh no, it needs me to do that. Okay. Um, well, what I can do, we'll give you another example of what this looks like. So that was one way. Um, we had downloaded a an HTML template that will just open up massively. And so to talk you through this flow, I'm going to go to open folder and this is what you need to do in whenever you're working with these projects is open up a folder and then you will look at the live preview. So this is a little different than the one that I had, but um, may, again, this is a one on HTML5 up called T Phantom. Okay, this is what I'm looking for. Let's just say I wanted to write that opening paragraph about who we are, and what we do. So um, what I could do is open that HTML file that I downloaded from Markdown, Markdown practice, right? And we'll copy paste the same thing in and just see what it looks like. So it's mainly in this section, heading one and paragraph, you know, that's your big introduction page that you see. And I'll show you what it looks like on the left. It says, this is Phantom. Here's what it is. Very cool. Now we do that. We paste it in and we've got all the code that we recently posted. Now we also didn't resize that from before. I'm gonna try to remember what that was. I think it was 252. 252, we needed to make that. Et voila, we have some code posted there. You can see that it's listed. Now it's, you know, it's still pretty small. I'm sure I can make it like as large as the screen if I wanted to. There's lots of things you could you could up this by it to 300 and you can make this. Ugh, what is it? I can't. My math is so bad. Uh, four five zero four. And we'll try that. What's really cool in brackets. Once you've gone out of Markdown and you moved in, you moved this code into brackets. Um, if you open up brackets and you and you do a preview with which is called live preview on the top right, you can actually actually see. Um, what your potential page looks like. Now, again, this is pretty big. Um, I could probably do a style that says image fit, which is what I need to do eventually. Um, so span class, let's see, what do you want to change that a little bit? Yeah, so there's some bits you can do to, to change that up. Um, again, like referencing some things you would see in W3 schools and some of those hacks would help you, but Again, if we're just concerned about this stuff, it looks pretty good. It's according with the conventions of the, the page itself because we didn't style it in any way. That we didn't say what font we wanted. That's, again, what Markdown is achieving or is aiming to do for writers. Um, so let's see. Let me just uh, cover a couple other things real quick. So... Again, like if you're following a workflow that we've talked about, and this is a pretty typical workflow for a lot of web writers. You know, we've thought about what we want our web, our text to look like. Maybe we've got like copy or proposal that's been given to us by, you know, um, our supervisor or somebody else. We've prepared the files so we kind of know what we need, like a folder for editing, um, a template. We need brackets or Dreamweaver or something we can use to edit HTML code. We can work in the code if we want to, or we can use Markdown. So we've kind of got this path. Um, the only thing is when you work with HTML code, if you know that, I mean, I'd say go with it. Um, but if you want to add one extra step, use Markdown. 
in order to compose all your text this way and then dump it into brackets after you've exported it as an HTML file. So a little step. And then after that, you can worry about like embedding content. So media, maybe you're doing a little bit of that with um, Markdown, but not too much. And then you might give it off, give it to a developer or a collaborator who can help you with more of the stylings and so forth. I mean, yeah, I could spend another workshop or stream just on how to style your pages and and do web writing and stuff like that we talked a little bit about that um in a, on a previous stream too that sort of make um also help expedite working with html code but um again i think on the writing side i'm more interested in talking to you all about markdown and then yeah wrapping everything up so you're explaining what your choices were things like that uh those are all really good for not only your colleagues but maybe your professor and I have all my students do that, or students in my classes will do that as well. And typically this is what a page will look like. You know, if you're loading up Phantom, which is from HTML5 up, uh, you will see a, a web page. Um, this is what it looks like in your browser. This is what it looks like as HTML code. So in order for the stuff on the left to appear, you need to make sure it's coded like this. However, a lot of writers use the coding language Markdown, which you can convert into HTML code. And that's what this demo did today. Um, and this is the code that it produces when it's exported from Markdown. And just to recap, again, you have the option to write in HTML or Markdown when you're doing this kind of work. Um, I, do th I think it's awesome. I mean, I'm getting more familiar with it um, each and every term. And I've started to introduce it more uh, intentionally in my classes so that I can help students feel like they have a little more grasp on you know, what it's like to work with markup languages. Um, because, let, I mean, let's face it, as professional writers, we're kind of expected to do a little bit of web writing, a little bit of coding, things like that, um, in, the, in the sort of spirit of content creation. And sometimes we need to know some of the stuff um, to maneuver a website given to us by a client or we want to build one from the ground up um, or work from a sandbox. Like I find that HTML5 up templates are really great for learning um, and for nonprofits because you can download it and then sort of mess with it from there and build something that truly feels like yours. Even though you've been given that shell, you can customize it in a lot of different ways. Um, whereas if you're working with drag and drops, those are also great for small businesses uh, student projects and so forth, but there are limitations in terms of things you can drag around on the screen, um, permissions they have for uploading files and stuff like that. So if you're trying to just test what it's like to do a little bit of um, writing with markup languages, whether it's Markdown or HTML, give this sort of stuff a try. Okay, so usually during the stream, you know, I'm, I'm answering questions, things like that throughout this. Um, taking a break, all those sort of things. So we're at about 45 minutes. I'm going to wrap this one up for now. But what I encourage you to do is add any comments below if you want to know more things about you know, differences between HTML and Markdown. Um, you want to know other resources that could be linked, so on and so forth. Feel free to let me know about those but this is a real crash course in you know how to work with these languages so let me talk about what's coming up in the next few streams and even as a continuation from this one we might think about more markup and web writing for next week so next week we're talking about um it's an open workshop on major writing projects and so if there's anything that you want to work on that you want to share in chat as a draft or ahead of time that we can talk about specifically for the stream and you know even more specifically about digital writing but it can be any project that you want to workshop as long as you're comfortable with it being workshopped on the stream and having that conversation feel free to send it my way we can talk through it if you want to come on the stream too and talk through it too as a conversation feel free to let me know i'd love to hear from um folks and i think that it really helps out with the stream too is when we have these kind of conversations so we're going to work on that next week if you in the meantime 
also want to work with Markdown a bit and you want to look at your code and, and kind of demo it, ask some questions, we can also practice that on the stream too. And, um, you know, help resolve issues or just talk about maybe how, uh, how interesting it is for you and what the experience has been like. So some options for you there, March 30th. And then on April 6th, we have writing games, games for writing. So kind of a nice way to end the term and, uh, and everything. And then we'll talk about different platforms that either encourage writing or games that, um, are centered around a writer and we'll hopefully be able to play a couple as well. Uh, I think last time I was on a stream, I was trying to do it once. Unfortunately, like my computer crashed. I don't know if it was because there was too much awesomeness happening between what was on the screen. Our conversations in the chat it was a very lively conversation at the time. So I'm looking forward to trying it again and fingers crossed that we don't have any errors this time. But other than that, folks, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this um, stream up. It's a recording up. Again, I am uh, out of town right now as you're watching this, but look forward to your comments. And thanks as always for watching. Bye.